What's up everybody, this is Danny and this is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 and today I'm hyped to unbox it. I want to show you some of the new features and compare it to the original Galaxy Fold to let you know if it's worth the upgrade. Plus, I'm going to give you some samples from this triple camera system to show you what this camera can do. It's going to be a good one, so hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's get right into it. This is the Mystic Bronze color. There's also a Mystic Black and you can customize the hinges if you want to personalize, which I think is nice. I love the butterfly detail on the box. And first up, there is a little nice note here. Change the shape of the future. The retail versions will come with some Z Premier concierge service information. It's just not here in this one. There's a thin box at the top and I really thought there was going to be a case in here, but nothing. Just the SIM card, removal tool, and the quick start guide. I really wish they would have thrown in a Kevlar thin case like they did with the OG Fold, but it is what it is. There is the Fold itself with the same care instructions as the first model. We will put the phone to the side and see what else comes inside of the box. You get the standard 25 watt fast charger that we have seen in the other Samsung models this year. Nothing new. And in this box, there is nothing. Let me know in the comments what you think this was supposed to be for. Then you get the USB-C cable and that's about it. Nothing else in this box, no headphones, no adapter. Samsung is keeping it simple this year. Let's get this plastic off here. Always fun to do that. And there it is, all shiny and fresh. Right away, I notice an immediate difference from the original Fold. This device doesn't even feel the same. It's basically just better in every way. The hinge is sturdier and has a little bit more resistance, which is a great thing. Here's the first Fold since it can't adjust to multiple angles. It just flaps around when it's open, but the Z Fold 2 stays in place. So the build of the hinge makes a real difference this time around. And I also noticed that it sounds quieter when opening and closing as well. Take a listen. The design is more squared off, which I think looks much nicer. It feels nicer too. The design looks more up to date. The back has a matte glass finish, which I really appreciate because on the last fold, I used the skin from the channel sponsor dbrand to keep those fingerprints off of there. Plus this robot skin is sick. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick one up for your phone. But let me take this off to show you the difference and let me know which one that you prefer in the comment section. I am all about this matte finish. I love that they simplified, got rid of the power button. Now the power button is a combo button with the fingerprint scanner. It's nice and clicky. That brush metal looks so much better in my opinion. There's a bigger camera bump on the back, but it's nowhere near as big as the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And you can see from the form factor and size, it's basically the same as the older one, which is really impressive because everything about the new Z Fold 2 is a major upgrade. Just look at that front cover display. It's much bigger, 6.2 inches and is a full display. The original full screen was a little small and that was a big complaint with a lot of people. And even though I got used to it, this new screen is so much better. It's almost like having two phones in one because it's totally usable without having to open your fold, which I think is a major win. Where it gets more interesting is when you open it, it doesn't even look like the same device. The bezels are so much thinner. There is no giant notch on the corner anymore. Just a small hole punch cut out for the front facing camera. The larger display really makes a difference. This really feels like the future. When you see it in person, I think you'll be blown away. The colors look very vibrant. Content looks really great on this display. So multimedia is top notch on this thing. And you get 120 Hertz adaptive refresh rate on this, which is really the icing on the cake. And with the higher refresh rate, even daily tasks like social media browsing is better. That fluid look and feel is everything. When it comes to power, you get the latest and greatest Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 Plus processor with 12 gigabytes of RAM. And a lot of you will be happy there is only one model. So there's gonna be Snapdragon worldwide. There is no Exynos model. 256 gigabytes of storage, but no micro SD card slot. There is 5G built in, which is amazing, both millimeter wave and sub six. So where it's available, you'll get the fastest mobile connection possible. The battery is 4,500 milliamp hours. I haven't used this long enough to determine battery life quite yet, but fast charging and wireless charging are here and also reverse wireless charging too. So make sure you subscribe for the full review where I'll dive deeper into daily battery life. 
I'm definitely digging some of the new features. I want to go over a few that I like. First is flex mode. We saw this on the Galaxy C Flip. This is made possible with the new hinge. You can pretty much angle it however you want. The hinge is very robust, so I hope developers jump on this functionality. At launch, it is limited, but YouTube is really nice this way. You can play the video on the top portion and then scroll through the comments on the bottom, which I think is great. The camera really gets the best functionality since you can set this down, the menu split to the bottom, and this is important for handy vlogging or live streaming or just recording video where there's a flat surface available. You can video call as well without holding it in your hand, get steady selfies, and my favorite is long exposure for nighttime shots in the camera. Here's an example of a 20 second night mode shot. I literally could not see the scene at all. But look at night mode with this phone on the table. This is incredible. So much detail captured than handheld. Now my only concern is that you have to put the front screen down on a surface to do this. Thank goodness there is a screen protector pre-installed on the cover screen out of the box. And by the way, there's one installed on the main display as well. But don't remove this yourself. If it gets scratched up, call Samsung and get it replaced. I don't recommend you taking it off yourself. I hope to see some glass screen protectors come out soon because it doesn't look like the official Samsung cases protect the front at all. Multitasking is also fantastic, easy to run two apps side by side. I love how you can customize this with shortcuts and you can even run three apps if you want to. I never use this, but it's a good choice to have. Split screen also works perfect on the cover display too. Just in case you were wondering, that taller display gives it a perfect split I also think it's neat that if you have three apps running at the same time, you can swipe to get a screenshot and you can choose between the screens which screenshot that you want, which is really cool. Finally, let's get to the cameras. You have a triple 12 megapixel camera system, a main, a ultra wide and a 2x telephoto. With the way that this camera design looks, I thought they would have included that crazy camera system from the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, but that's not the case. There are some clever things that they did with the cover display this time around though. I love how you can use the front screen to frame yourself to take selfies with the main camera setup. This gives you the flexibility to shoot high quality selfies and also use that super wide angle camera. Most people will probably be okay with this, but no 8K video here. 4K 60 frames per second is the tops on this with 4K 24 frames per second in pro video mode. So here's some photos and video that I took yesterday to show you what this camera can do. I hope you enjoy them. Subscribe for more videos on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 and let me know what you want to see in terms of camera comparisons or do camera comparisons even matter on this phone? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and let me know what you think about the Z Fold 2's camera quality.